Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well. Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, here recently on the channel, I've been sharing other people's home labs, and I've even seen some other creators in the tech space sharing their home labs on their channels. So I guess it's just that time of year again. So let's go ahead and take a look at the home lab that's currently behind me. Okay, so this is my SysRax 27U uh, tower here that has almost all of my stuff in it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look through here. I've kind of got the side panel off, but that's unrelated. I just forgot to put that back on uh, after doing some troubleshooting with something we'll talk about as well. So let's start on the top. Uh, here we've got a Pi Box, kind of a self-hosted solution that was sent to me that I just didn't enjoy well enough to do anything with. Maybe I'll take another look at it and see if it's changed my mind. Uh, I've got a little Pi router here from Seed. Um, I, again, it's a CM4 module inside there doing doing Raspberry Pi things, but spe specifically being a router. Uh, again, I just never found a use for it. Over here, uh, this isn't set up on there very well at all. I should probably be slapped for that. But uh, basically, this is the new Zima Blade. Uh, we did an unboxing of this uh, on the channel the night I got it here a month or two ago or something. Um, and of course, over here, I've got... Uh, uh, this is a, a two and a half gig uh, card here with active cooling on it. And then a couple of eight terabyte drives. I actually did a short uh, showing a 16 terabyte Casa OS installed on this setup. I'm actually gonna make a video about this soon. Uh, I've just had a lot going on and uh, there were a lot of videos about it. So I thought I would just wait till things calmed down just a little bit. Uh, back over here, uh, I've got a TP-Link, what is that, a TLSF1009P. Uh, this is primarily just for the PoE stuff uh, for the two Synology cameras that I've got uh, in my backyard, which is right, right out there. Uh, a couple of camera batteries, I'm not sure why those are there other than just sheer laziness. Uh, behind, or right below that, I've got uh, a Synology DS23+, Plus, uh, and that is actually just acting as uh, storage and, and access to the cameras that are out there. Um, and that's what it's there for. I think I've actually got some more stuff coming from Synology to put in there, but uh, only time will tell on that. Um, and that's actually charging uh, the batteries back there that, you know, for, for my camera and whatnot. Uh, then I've got that, that is just a Raspberry Pi 4 in one of those neat little cases. I really need to dust. I dusted inside the case. I just forgot to dust the top of the the, the tower here, the rack, the whatever. Uh, so that's kind of what's, oh, there, I guess there's another Raspberry Pi uh, 3B plus, uh, right, right back, right back there. Uh, and then of course the Zima board case from when I first got, uh, one of the first Zima boards, uh, but that's back there. That's kind of a thing that I really dig. Uh, so yeah, now that we've taken a look at what's on top, which is just kind of a, a holding space, uh, just to, just to stick some stuff up there. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the case or into the, the, the rack itself. So we're going to go ahead, just going to unlock that. Oops. On, there we go. So starting at the top, we've just got um, this patch panel that has uh, keystones in it. I love these. I actually need to get a second one of these to put underneath so I can clean up some of this cabling. I think it'll just look nicer if I put a plate up here. I've got plates to put up in the top to fill this. But again, I want to get another one of these uh, patch panels to put below uh, just so I've got cleaner cables, basically. Um, and then, of course, we've got our TP-Link uh, TLSG3428X. Uh, this is a managed switch uh, that the folks at TP-Link sent me to help manage my Omada network and kind of everything going on in, in the rack here. Uh, it is 24 ports of 1 gig and then 4 ports of 10 gig SFP+. Um, and you can see that these have all just been broken out into uh, RJ45 adapters. And those get super, super hot. I don't like that, but it is what it is. Um, also, my cable management's garbage. Um, but I think once I get uh, another one of these patch panels to put down there, I can clean that up and I'll be much happier with it. Uh, below that, you can see that I've got, still got my three Zima boards uh, that are currently running a, a Proxmox high availability cluster. Uh, this isn't totally optimized for, for what it's doing. Uh, as you can see, the uh, it's just got one uh, Ethernet port on each one of these being used. Each one's obviously got two. Um, and all of these... Uh, one gigs are just doing everything. But basically, if you go to like any of my DB Tech sites, any of my public facing stuff, uh, you're probably going to be hitting this high availability cluster right there. Um, and those have been up and running strong for almost a year now with no downtime to speak of other than when like when my ISP goes down. Uh, assorted nuts and bolts and, and cage rack or yeah, cage racks 
uh, nuts and screws and things like that back there, a couple of screwdrivers. Uh, that's what's going on on that rack. And if we kneel down here, as my old man joints do their thing, uh, we've got a very dusty DS or a 16, DS 1621XS Plus. This was the first device Synology ever sent me. This was the first device that any ma large manufacturer ever sent me. Uh, this is honestly, this is kind of a pride and joy for me. I know it sounds silly, but it's a very sentimental thing uh, that, that they they reached out, they offered to send this to me, uh, kitted out with uh, six eight terabyte drives, um, and it's got a 10 gig uh, network uh, module in the back. Um, and it's got 32 gigs of RAM. It came with 16, um, but I found some non-ECC memory that works. Um, and if you guys are interested in that, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. But, um, but you don't need ECC for everything. I know it supports it, but you don't necessarily need it. Um, and for the price that I got the 32 gigs, I was stoked. Um, so that's, that's what's going on there. This, this supports most of my internal uh, stuff as far as the, the services that I'm running inside my house for for all kinds of different things, and we may take a look at that in a separate video, but uh, this is kind of the, the 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 central storage location for most everything on my network, uh, and it's about two-thirds full. I need to do some cleanup, and I need to do some more optimizing and that sort of thing. Then there's this little guy. This is from Latte Panda. Um, he came with uh, one of the, the devices they sent me, uh, and it's just cute, so I keep him right there kind of guarding everything in the rack. Um, below that, if I scrooch down just a little more, uh, this is a TerraMaster F4, 423. It's not even on right now. Um, I actually took two 8 terabyte drives out of that to put in uh, in in the Casa OS uh, setup there. And since it wasn't actively being used for anything, I ended up having to harvest one of the fans out of the back of this uh, for what we'll get into on the next shelf. But um, but that's it. The, this is just kind of a storage spot right now. This is unfortunately uh, scrap salvage, and I, I I kind of feel dirty saying that, but it is what it is. Um, big empty spot here. I'll probably find something to put in there at some point. Just not yet. Uh, this is kind of a fairly new setup I've got down here uh, with these little videos running in the background that you've probably seen in some of my newer videos. Um, and this is it's just a it's a 1080p screen. It's not touch screen or anything. Just a very basic screen there, but behind that, uh, right there is another Synology that got sprayed with something. This is an F5221, and it is actually my one of my backup solutions. So basically everything on my network uh, gets backed up. This is my backup station. Uh, I have to keep the case off of it, which isn't great for thermals, but uh, I was messing around with it once and broke um, the IO, or the, the board that handles all of the, the, like the lights and the button and everything. And uh, if it does power off, I've got to reset the BIOS via a jumper uh, kind of like right back there somewhere uh, and then plug it in and then it will turn back on. So it's kind of jank. And that's why I'm not upset about putting this screen in front that I also desperately need to dust, it looks like. Uh, and then I've got this little Pyron Man case here with a Raspberry Pi 4 in it uh, that's running uh, what we saw on this screen. I've just got a, a janky connection over here on power um, that um, there it goes. I've got to be careful with, but for the sake of what we're doing, it's whatever. There it goes. And then over here, uh, this is another uh, TerraMaster F2 423, um, and it is my Plex server. That's all it does. It's got eight terabytes of hard drive space in it, and I'm using about 10 gigs of that. Um, and so basically that runs uh, my Plex server, like I mentioned, but it's also pulling all of the video files and, and, and everything uh, from my Synology device. Um, so so everything just gets pulled from here. Luckily, I've got several terabytes of caching in this. So the stuff that gets accessed frequently gets stored on the cache drive. I've also got caching on this on this TerraMaster device. So between the two caching and uh, setups and whatnot, this actually runs pretty well. However, I came in here yesterday to record a video, actually a follow-up video to a video I made a mistake on. Anyway, came in here and the fan in this one was just super, super loud and unhappy and whatnot. So I figured I'll take a fan from this since it's not being used and I'll put it in here. Um, and, and now it's quiet. Everything's good. I'm super happy with the performance that I get here. Um, and, and it just, it just chugs along and it serves my media with no issues in, in the time that I've had it up. So super happy actually with all of my TerraMaster devices, they all kind of just do what I want them to do, uh, which in this case is unfortunately being scrap backup and Plex. Um, so let's go ahead. Oops, see, see, as soon as I moved it weird, and then I got to rejigger this over here, and eventually it'll be like, hey, 
why max it? There it goes, and then it'll give me back the, the videos that we're playing. Gotta dust that. So a little hiccup there, but uh, right here we've got an Elite Desk 800G1 uh, tower with an i5-4590 in there. This is my little demo server. Anytime I'm doing a, like a tutorial or I'm testing out a, a new container that I'm not sure about, uh, this has Proxmox on it, and I just deploy a new container, a new like a little uh, Linux uh, Debian uh, 11 container, and, and it's already got everything set up and ready to go. And uh, that's what this is. I'm thinking about downsizing though, uh, and that's because if you look down here, like I, this is, this idles, I say idles, this is fairly consistent, about 270, 250 to 280 watts of power. However, that said, that's this entire rack. Like everything on this rack is being powered or, or is being, uh, being supported by this device. Um, and I figure 270 to 280 watts for everything going on in here with every, just just everything that I've got going at any given time. Uh, 280 watts isn't too bad, I don't think. Um, but let me know if you guys know how much your your uh, your towers, your your server racks, your home labs. Let me know how much power are you pulling on yours. Again, mine's less than 300 watts. But again, I think I can bring that down if I if I downsize this to do, you know, like maybe a little single board computer, like I've got. Uh, a couple of latte pandas. Of course, I've got the Zima blade um, and that sort of thing. But that's that's what's going on in my rack over here. Oh, you know what? I lied. Back here in this little empty spot next to the the thing that's being salvaged presently, uh, I've got my my tiny pilot back there. Well, sort of, kind of right right there. But all of the other stuff uh, for the expansion, so I can have multiple devices hooked up to it, is all resting right back there. Um, but yeah, that's, that is my, that is my, that is my home lab. This is my rack. This is most of it. Uh, there are some things like in the living room for, uh, for networking and that sort of thing, kind of the brains of my network. But this is, this is what you see in the, uh, in the videos. Like this is what's behind me in all of my videos. Um, and I thought I would just take a few minutes to, to share what's in my server rack. So there you go, guys. There is my, uh, my server rack here in the studio. Again, I've got a couple of different things, like uh, an access point that's in the house and uh, some Omada stuff that's in the house, just because that's where it made the most sense to put it at the time, and I didn't want to move it. So that's where it's just going to stay, uh, probably in perpetuity. Uh, but definitely let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from about that. Uh, also, let me know uh, what kind of stuff you think I should, uh, or what I should replace my, my little Proxmox test server with. I'd love to hear that. Uh, let me know what you guys have got going on in your own home labs, and maybe... Maybe we'll start doing some more uh, live streams where we talk about uh, about your home labs and that sort of thing. But I think with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.